What's up, folks? Welcome back to the Eagle's Nest. So the six arc rifle has been one year since they've been playing around with this cartridge in the volt action. Finally put together a six millimeter ARC in a arrow precision complete AR-15 build. So this is completely arrowed out. Got an upper, lower, um, and arrow barrel as well. One in seven twist. What can I say about the six arc? Their claimings of uh, barrel life. Well, I got 4,400 rounds down this pipe of this Savage here, and I can definitely say that, yeah, the barrel life on the 6 arc is definitely phenomenal. Uh, I have around 5,000 of erosion on that barrel, and today I'm going to play around with the 6 arc in the AR platform and see what that does on this rifle. Other than that, we'll talk about the performance of the 6 arc, what I found, what I did not like about the 6 arc, and what I do like, and why I think the 6 arc will suit you. Stick around. First off, huge shout out to my partner, H&W Guns and Tactical, for providing this 6 arc AR-15. If you guys are looking to build a bolt action or an AR-15, hit us up at dpgunworks.com or handw.biz. I'll put a link in the description below. So even though I have 4,400 rounds plus down the barrel of that Savage 10, this thing is still putting out phenomenal groups. This is a 10 shot group using a 105 grain Lapua Cinar L with 30 grains of lever evolution. SDs aren't that bad, However, this thing does hold the group at 1,000 yards. In a bolt action, the 6 arc is a whole different animal. Now, this is a 20 shot group with no misses at 990 yards that my son shot, and that's a 12 inch plate. With factory ammunition 105 grain Hornady Blacks, in my experience, that seems to be the best performer for factory ammunition. So if you're looking to build one in a bolt action, the caveat to this cartridge is that it uses a .440 bolt head, which is slightly smaller than the 308. So cartridges like the 224 Valkyrie or the 65 Grendel would be a direct fit. That means that only certain actions and custom action manufacturers can provide support to this cartridge. Luckily, I built quite a bit of these rifles last year, and what I found to be the best working and best performer is a Zermak Arms TL3 or the Origin Action. Also, if you have a Savage 10 Action, that will be an easy conversion as there's availability on PPC style bolt heads. So far, the best twist rate that I've seen perform the best is a 1 in 7.7 3R rifling. That gives me availability to shoot a 58 grain VMAX at 3,600 feet a second and all the way up to a 115 grain DTAC at 2,600 feet a second. If you step up to the Burger Hybrids, the 109 grains, you could get those moving at 2,840 feet a second, which is my current combination for PRS competition. And at 30 grains, which is 3 tenths less than my max charge on my rifle, it could push this 109 grain burger hybrid at 2,930 feet a second. So let's break down a pros and cons list of this 6 arc. Its performance is slightly better than a 6BR and just under a 6 dasher. Now I know there's a BRA, there's a BRX and all that. However, you don't have to fire form this cartridge or get expensive brass. So that's another benefit. Which brings up the second pro. It's cheaper and easier to reload. It uses powders like the CFE 223 and Lever Evolution for those heavier grain projectiles, meaning you can put this on a progressive press and reload this thing a lot faster than the other cartridges with extruded powder. As far as brass, it's a lot easier to find brass for this cartridge just by sourcing out 6.5 Grendel brass from Starline or Lapua, which by the way is a lot cheaper than some of these 6mm cartridges out there. This cartridge is very versatile and will fit 90% of most shooters. So you can shoot a 58 grain VMAX with 8208 XBR at 3600 feet a second with a 26 inch barrel. Very devastating to coyotes or small varmint. Or you can step up to the heavy grain projectiles like the 105 and 109, even the 112s and the 115s for those long range or PRS style competition. So I say 90% of most shooters. To explain, most shooters don't shoot past 500 yards or maybe a thousand. Now, if you are able to do that, in my experience, I've been finding this cartridge to perform very well in the wind out to 1,250 yards, and I've been able to push this cartridge well past a mile. And lastly, probably the biggest pro is the barrel and brass life of this cartridge. Now, I have 4,400 rounds down the barrel of my rifle, counting the primer boxes, and everybody's mileage may differ. But to show you guys the bore cam of my rifle, I can show you guys how well the rifling still looks with no fire cracking. Like I mentioned, I have four thousandths of throat erosion, which really isn't that much if you're considering how many rounds went down that pipe. So what we're looking at here is the actual edge of my chamber here, uh, looking for fire cracking, right there where the case neck meets the actual chamber, lead and throat. I'm looking for any kind of cracks, damages, or scarring. 
Um, what I like to do is actually trim my brass five thousandths before hitting that wall. It uh, gets rid of the actual carbon ring uh, that most people actually see on the six millimeter cartridges. And then uh, we're gonna start inspecting the actual throat and lead here. Now, like I said, I got five thousandths erosion and everything seems to be wearing uh, very uniform. Uh, the biggest thing we'll see here is a lot of fouling buildup and that will be in one of the cons lists that we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but everything seems to be uniform, no scratches, no damages. Uh, the lands and grooves all seem to be exactly the same. And um, we'll go down the pipe of the barrel and look for any kind of copper buildup or any kind of damages we can see here. So I've been primarily shooting CFE 223 because of the availability over Lever Evolution. Which by the way, Lever Evolution and CFE 223 are very similar other than the fact that Lever Evolution does not have the copper fouling eraser. Now the CFE 223, as you can tell here, it is reducing the copper fouling. Uh, doing its job however the fouling itself the carbon fouling that i'm getting on this barrel uh, makes me have to actually clean the barrel out at about 100 rounds so if you're using cfe 223 or lever evolution you will have to clean out this barrel a lot more often than normal it's a very sooty powder it does gum up your muzzle brakes and uh, like i said it collects a lot of carbon now the next con is going to be the 440 inch uh, bolt head or otherwise known as the ppc bolt head now, the, this is where the 6BR and the other 6mm cartridges take advantage because it's not easy to convert any action out there to a PPC style bolt head. Uh, so you're limited to certain actions like the Savage, the uh, Zermec Arms, I think Curtis does have one now. Um, so converting your regular rifle, which is one of the main questions that I get often, is can I convert a 700 or a Howa 1500 to the 6 arc? The answer is uh, to me no, um, it's not worth it, the time and labor spent to convert a bolt from a Remington 700 to a PPC, um, it's just not worth it, not, the, not to mention the reliability factor of it. So um, you're pretty much limited to certain actions. So in a bolt action for this cartridge, AICS mags are the way to go, um, however that's the downside and caveat also. Uh, there's only one AICS mag that I know for sure works, which is made by MDT, it's a 224 Valkyrie mag. I have tried numerous mags for the bolt action and AICS, like the 6BR conversions. Uh, they just don't work. They're not 100% reliable. What they end up doing is nose diving on like the second to last round or the last round. So one of the biggest cons, and in my opinion, a big pie in the face to Hornaday, uh, and kind of a touchy subject to talk about, would be the performance out of the AR-15 in this cartridge. Now this cartridge was specifically designed to be a heavy hitter with impressive numbers out of the AR-15 platform. But folks that actually have shown uh, content or have made content and shown results of this cartridge in the AR-15 platform are putting out about an average of a 1 MOA group. Factory ammunition wise, I'd say the 105 grain um, Hornady Black Precision Ammo is probably going to be the best performer out of the AR-15. As far as hand loads, it's been extremely picky from what I've seen to actually get a load working that's consistent. Obviously, I'm going to dive in this for myself to see what I could do uh, with the AR-15 in this cartridge. But so far, from what I've seen, it's uh, not really looking too good. So, in conclusion, the 6 ARC cartridge. One year behind this thing in a bolt-action rifle. I can absolutely say I love this cartridge. It suits for everything I need to do. You could put a brand new shooter behind this rifle in this cartridge and have them enjoy almost no recoil with uh, minimal percussion so they could really enjoy and actually learn and develop the fundamentals of long range shooting. If you're looking for this from PRS, this is a very awesome cartridge. A lot of folks are going towards that 2840 FPS right now um, and the other 6mm variants. And the 6 Arc is just a very good performer, very efficient cartridge uh, for that velocity. Well folks, thanks for watching and I'll catch y'all on the next video.